we're also going to talk a little bit about what we can expect in 2021. Uh, and then finally, there will be a question and answer period at the end uh, where Tim will uh, lead the, the question and answers um, as they come in. This all, we expect this to take about an hour. So we're going to wrap this up at the bottom half of the next hour. And I hope that there should be about a 30 minutes of presentation and about 30 minutes to answer questions. So a little bit of the timeline recap. Uh, this started all back in 2018 with some meetings, just uh, board members from both organizations. Uh, we put together a task group to come up with ideas on how we could possibly come together uh, as two organizations into one moving forward. Uh, beginning of 2020, the boards decided that this was a good idea and that we would bring it to a membership vote. Uh, the membership voted in favor, uh, vastly in favor, about 90% for merging the organizations, which is where we kicked off um, a bunch of integration teams. We kicked off our legal team to bring the associations together and also our branding team. The branding team has been hard at work and we have uh, an announcement to make today where on January 6th, we will have a launch event where we will be uh, introducing the new name of the organization we've been referring to as New Org all this time. It's exciting for me and Tim and some of the other members who have been saying New Org all this time and getting frustrated with it. Um, so we will finally be able to release the new name, the tagline, uh, give you guys a you know, some things that the branding team has been working on, you know, visually for what the logo will look like and all that. So very exciting stuff. And then the first half of 2021, we're going to be continuing with uh, bringing the organizations together. So a very exciting uh, time in, uh, in, in where we are uh, with the with NACE and SSPC and, and moving together towards uh, a merged new work. All right, so our, um, our structure has been this. Uh, since the boards uh, voted uh, for the merger and the, and the association voted for the merger, a transition team was created of members of both SSPC and NACE. Um, this transition team was to act in place of the two boards on any decisions uh, that must be made for the new merged organization moving forward. So the transition team put together a steering committee made up of uh, some member leaders uh, to help drive things and, um, and make sure the transition team wasn't wasting its time on things it didn't need to be focused on because it's a large group and uh, they need to make some important decisions uh, during this time. We also spun up some integration teams, uh, both on the staff side and um, uh, on the member side. So they've been working uh, very hard at putting together recommendations for uh, transition team approval. Some of them have already been presented to the transition team, but many of them are gonna pre be presented over the next two days. So the transition team has got some long, uh, two long days ahead of it to make a lot of uh, really important decisions for how um, the association is going to come together based on the work and recommendations from these uh, integration teams. So um, we're really excited to see the remaining presentations and make some final decisions. Uh, that ultimately will get uh, the organization kicked off in January. So the steering team meets weekly. A lot of the integration teams have been meeting some weekly, some bi-weekly, uh, but based on a schedule um, that they pick and then the transition team every two weeks gets together other than these meetings that we have coming up in a couple of days. And then we have McKinley Associates um, working with us on this project to, to really project manage everything keep everything organized and working together with staff to make things happen. So the, uh, the list of integration teams that we have uh, working right now um, is the list that you see before you. Uh, the um, highlighted chapters and sections, publications and technical and research teams are going to be the ones that we're gonna hear from today with a bit of an update. So the process that the integration teams have been using uh, started off with meetings to come together, uh, collecting information, coming up with the decisions that have to be made, and uh, you know having discussions over you know all those decisions that have to be made to finally get to the point where they're ready to make recommendations. And we are in that last phase of uh, you know what we've been trying to accomplish throughout the second part of the year. 
And, uh, you know, I'm happy to report, I I'm super pleased. I know that a lot of the other members of the transition team and steering team are very pleased with the information that's been provided from the integration team so far. And we're excited to see um, what else is gonna be coming up uh, in the next couple of days. So here we're gonna start with uh, our first update. So Bernardo, if you would take it away for publications. Uh, thank you, Sam. Um, so I, I was on the publications integration team and our purpose was to develop uh, publications recommendations for approval by the transition team. So uh, next slide, please. We did that in two stages. Um, first is the, the member facing side and then it's the author facing side or the author experience. Um, we'll start with the member facing side so our publications integration team, um, we first analyzed what we already have between the two organizations. Um, we analyzed the current publications and the formats for how they're offered um, and the, the purpose of each of those publications and the benefit to our members. Uh, next, we, we asked our members actually what they would like to see and what information they need to be better at their jobs, to be more effective at their jobs. And last, we also had our staff side um, conduct contractor focus groups. And so this was looking for um, feedback specifically focused on the contractors um, to see what types of content they would like to see and how they would like to see it. And so that can be different formats. Um, it could be a longer format, shorter format, could be video format, et cetera. All right, next slide, please. Okay, so the second part is the, um, the author facing side. Um, and these are for the, uh, the experts in our industry and related industries that want to publish with New Org. And so um, we put a, a lot of focus on providing the right tools to make that experience easy um, and to help them provide their content to the market that would benefit the market, meaning our members most effectively. And so that also, of course, helps them increase, gain, gain, increase and gain visibility. So we're going to um, continue with our existing publication lines in some cases, and we're going to develop and expand new content. So between the two organizations, we have a combination of books, magazines, newsletters, webcasts, podcasts, and other um, publication products. Um, to provide an example of a few of those, um, you'll see on the right, a few different um, uh, hash marks. So for webcasts, um, a few examples there, um, a systematic approach to coding failure analysis. Another one is growing your business, your coding's business. And another one is polyurea technology, common failures, fixes, and everything in between. And so I point those out to, to demonstrate that we're not just attacking just a coding's perspective, or just a business perspective, it's kind of the, the full range of options. And that's again, focused on um, ultimately helping our members, but this is the, the author tie-in of how they can um, bring their information and technical expertise to our publications. Um, the next you'll see is podcasts, uh, making, and I'll give you just a few examples here as well, making codings tools more user intuitive, application tips for coding's um, job sites in 2020. And then there was also a case study um, coding the historic Mackinac Bridge. And the podcast is one of those resources um, that's really uh, gaining a lot of traction or formats rather, that's gaining a lot of traction. And so this is a, a, an ample opportunity for our uh, members and other experts in the industry to, um, to demonstrate and help the industry with their knowledge. To give a few examples of books, um, we have Cor uh, Corrosion Control and Petroleum Production. This is the third edition. And that's just to emphasize, we are continuing to update some of these resources as necessary over time. Another example is um, AC Corrosion of Pipelines. And the last is Technology in Action, Robotics Volume 1. So this is, is keeping pace with the industry and uh, continuing to provide that cutting edge technical content that our members will benefit from. Um, on my last point, um, actually let me get to one more resource. Um, so we do also have digital industry editions and currently there are three of those, the Infrastructure Insights, 
Water Corps and Maritime News. Um, those are, are focused on those specific markets and they're an easy introduction um, and continuation of content in those areas for our members. So if a member is interested in, let's say the maritime sector, this is a very easy way to go and get the information they need um, without having to search a lot of resources. And those offerings might increase in the future. And sometimes there are tie-ins too between the magazines and the industry editions. All right, my last point I wanted to make here, um, JPCL, which is a magazine that was offered to SSPC members, um, the Journal of Protective Coatings and Linings, um, it's owned by a third party publisher. And that arrangement will no longer continue under New Org. Um, but to, to main, make sure that we're still offering our members and our authors um, a way to uh, publish and consume that content, um, or the types of content that was in, uh, in JPCL, um, some of that information will, might flow into other publications, such as other magazines offered by New Org. So for our members, they're going to receive subscriptions to um, Codings Pro and or Materials Performance. And a lot of that technical content that, that they were comfortable seeing in the past and other resources, um, they are going to find that similar content in those magazines. And in addition, they're going to see that traditional content that was already offered in them. And that was my last, my last slide. So any questions? Excellent. We can wait. Th th yeah, thank you, Bernardo. Any, any questions uh, regarding anything Bernardo presented and any of the integration teams present, uh, if you could uh, put them in the Q&A section, that would be great. And with that, um, Jane, would you uh, take over with chapters and sections? Sure. Uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, this is Jane Brown. Um, I am working on the chapters and uh, sections area of the merger, and we are looking to develop recommendations for consolidating the chapters and sections from NASA and SSPC. And re, they will be rebranded as communities, and they will be both geographic and topical. Next slide, please, Sam. So to begin, um, we talked about uh, the envisioned future where we keep both NACE and SSPC members in communities that serve the grassroots needs um, of their geographic location and or topical um, area that they're interested in. We looked at the models and structures, uh, the value proposition and the purpose uh, geographic boundaries and the consolidation, um, minimum performance requirements that relate both back to what serves the new org best, as well as meeting the needs of country, uh, tax codes, things of that nature. And then we discuss these communities of interest, and then we're going to be looking at the considerations for this transition. If I could get the next slide, please. So <clears throat> to begin with, especially now with the pandemic and our continued globalization, um, we're looking to create uh, flexible communities that really can engage members and get them not only involved in the organization, but also give them opportunities both for peer-to-peer -peer interaction, uh, technical knowledge, um, and you know, future leadership opportunities for individuals. Um, there were several approaches to organizing and structuring the um, association, the new association. And we have chosen to, of course, call these new groups communities so that we don't stay with the legacies of sections or chapters that NACE and SSPC had previously had. Um, we're hoping we can use the strengths of both organizations. Um, SSPC and NACE did do things very, very differently at the grassroots level. Uh, NACE was um, heavy on reporting and structure and NACE was a little, or SSPC was a little bit looser. So we're hoping to find the best of both worlds, um, make it easier to, to build your local area up and to have a strong community and to simplify the process. 
Um, so the mission is that member value will drive all of our decisions. Next slide, please. So uh, as mentioned previously, we will continue to have geographic communities. Um, many of the NACE and SSPC communities will simply merge. There were uh, both a chapter and a section in the same geography, and we will bring those together. In other cases, SSPC had a geographic zone that NACE didn't, and those will continue. Uh, there is the feeling that most sections and chapters um, came about organically, and so there was a purpose to having a certain section or chapter in a certain area, and we don't perceive that that will change greatly. Um, the other thing that we hope to do is create communities of interest. Uh, we realize with the lack of travel and globalization that some people aren't as interested in being connected um, you know, peer to peer locally, they're more interested in a certain topic or focus. And so communities will be created that serve those needs so that those members can be involved in the specific uh, technology area that they are interested in. Um, we're hoping to incentivize the programs to recognize innovation and excellence um, across these structures. And we're considering um, implementation issues regarded to virtual items, which um, the previous speaker spoke about and we you know, know is the, the future to some degree. Um, community leader resources um, and guidance on leadership structures for communities uh, that will be merging worldwide. Um, we do feel that um, you know, the maturity of all the members are going to hopefully make this a smooth transition um, in merging the groups that need to merge or involving um, either the NACE or SSPC folks into an already existing group. Um, so the current NACE areas, which um, SSPC did not have, but NACE's hierarchy was sections, areas, and then the international organization. The area um, governance, if I can call it that, will shift to the membership program committee. And that will be um, done sometime in 2021. And that is all we have. And if there's any questions, um, we, we're very uh, excited about this. We're positive. We think. Um, you know, we have a very strong path forward that's going to serve membership well and give everybody the options they're looking for. Fantastic. Thanks so much, Jane. Uh, next, we have Dawn presenting on behalf of the technical and research integration team. Thank you very much, Sam. Uh, so this is very exciting to be talking about technical and research. Uh, our purpose is to propose technical and research program committees that serve an essential uh, resource for industry changing or leading technical information for member and non-member stakeholders of New Org. And it's very exciting to be able to talk about technical and research program committees because we will indeed have two program committees going forward. Uh, so that is exciting news for everybody. And uh, if we could have the next slide, thank you. Our technical and research integration team started a little bit later than the rest of them. So we are a little bit uh, um, behind uh, on our planning, but we're certainly catching up fast. And I'm pleased to say that our team includes 10 organization members from both the NACE and SSPC side. And looking historically, we had perhaps more focus on technical and research in NACE in terms of having committees that were dedicated to that uh, as opposed to the SSPC side, but certainly huge technical resource uh, over there. And it's exciting to see these coming together. We have six staff members as well and a very uh, much appreciated project manager. Uh, so we will be addressing the focus of these two program committees going forward. Uh, we'll be pleased to present the preliminary recommendations for the transition team uh, tomorrow 
in fact, and the detailed recommendations that include all of our subtasks will be formalized, we're hoping by the end of first quarter of 2021. And our next and final slide, please. Thank you. So our high level objectives are to develop the transition criteria for the existing technical committees and develop the operating procedures for those committees during the interim period and identify those key knowledge, skills and abilities for each of the committees to make sure that we have a very smooth path forward. And we'll, we'll also establish the working charters for the committees and how those committees will contribute to all product groups within new org. And it's important to emphasize that we will be focusing very much on bringing the vision and the voice of our international stakeholders, our members, our non-members, our communities of interest to the full as we proceed. So looking historically at the way we've been set up within NACE is that we've had our technology exchange groups, we've had task groups that have contributed to standards. Standards, of course, will be uh, its own program committee and its own right. Uh, we also have reached out internationally through our section technology advisory groups, and we've had a lot of energy around that, and we look to forward to making the most of that going forward with our communities of interest. So lots of excitement, lots more to come, and we'll look forward to telling more about that in the future. Thank you, Sam. Thank you very much, Dawn. Excellent. Um, so next, we're going to move into, you know, what's 2021 going to look like for New Work? So a couple things that have happened over the past, you know, month or so is the program committees that these are the committees that are going to be reporting directly to the boards on either side of the organization. On the C6 side, we have named the chair of each of these committees, and the chair is working towards developing the members uh, for each of these committees. So what has occurred over the last several weeks is there was a volunteer application sent out. Uh, the volunteer applications have been reviewed by the um, chairs for each one of the uh, program committees, um, and the program committee chair is actually going to be presenting to the transition team their slate of members for each one of these uh, program committees uh, for approval before the end of the year. So that uh, starting in the beginning of 2021, they could be up and running and they could be working on the things that they need to accomplish right away uh, to get uh, new org moving in the right direction. So just to quickly name them, and I'm going to apologize in advance if I butcher anyone's <laughs> names. But uh, accreditation, which is our company certifications, uh, is going to be handled by Connor McManus. Uh, certifications, which are all the individual uh, certifications, Kyle Greenfield. Advocacy Public Affairs, Jim Feather. Uh, membership uh, for our chapters and sections, Deborah Boisvert. Uh, on the C3 side, uh, education and training is going to be chaired by Tom Higginbotham. Uh, standards, Derek Castle. Technical activities, Kat Coronado. Uh, research, Mike Hurley. Conferences and events, Krista Heidersbach. Uh, publications, Amaro Castaneda Lopez. Hopefully I said that okay. Uh, and pre professional, Steve uh, Reidstadler. So, um, you know, these people have a lot of work ahead of them as well as the groups that they're going to put around them. But, uh, you know, we, we hope to see big things from each of these groups and are excited to see where they go moving forward. So the next thing is uh, membership. Um, in 2021, anyone uh, who has a membership in either organization, so whether that's SSPC or NACE, uh, will now have a dual membership. Um, what we're working towards as an organization, this is mostly on the staff side, they're working towards creating uh, you know, a, a true new org membership. We're guessing that that's gonna take place in the second half of 2021. Um, but until that uh, actually occurs, uh, you're gonna be renewing if you have to renew um, in your, you know, with your current organization, whichever one you're associated with. And if you're associated with both, um, you, know, you can just uh, renew in one organization. But if you do have questions about that best uh, to talk to uh, staff uh, regarding those questions. Um, staff will no longer be SSPC staff and NACE staff it is a merged staff already. Um, all the staff uh, you know, know, know who they report to in the Newark format. 
Um, Bob Chalker is is now heading up, uh, you know, the new organization, and uh, you know the staff. I think is very excited overall to be one staff. So any questions on your membership on how to renew if you need to, or if you're just a member of one organization and you need uh, or are looking for resources from the other organization, please reach out to staff with those questions. Um, or feel free to ask them at the end of this presentation. Um, additional things to think about, uh, accreditation, certification, and standards. Um, they're going to be handled you know, much the same way they have been immediately um, until they're not. Um, so essentially how that's going to look is you know, accreditation, if you're currently accredited with just SSPC or just NACE, you're going to continue to renew in that manner until the accreditation team changes that. The same with certifications and the same with standards. However, if you, know, you have one certification from one side and, and you want a certification from the other side, uh, again, those are questions for staff. Um, so if you wanna you know, direct questions to um, you know, members of either, you know, staff members from either of the previous organizations, uh, in those areas, they'll be happy to help you out with those questions. Regarding confer <coughs> conferences and events, um, SSPC's uh, typically winter uh, conference has been postponed uh, till December of 2021. And uh, NACE uh, Corrosion 2021, which is generally held at the end of the first quarter, early second quarter, um, is also going to be um, uh, not in the in the standard format as as we would want it. Uh, so we were supposed to meet together in Salt Lake City, which is not going to happen. Uh, there is currently a communication out to all NACE and SSPC members um, looking for input on what they'd like to see out of uh, that conference um, in the way of uh, you know some sort of delayed in-person conference uh, or if they'd like to see it online or some sort of combination thereof. So um, if any, anyone who's on the call can you know, answer those questions, uh, that would certainly be appreciated. Uh, the transition team, steering team and integration teams are winding down. Uh, there's a lot of work for the transition team this coming week. Um, but after that, uh, everything is gonna move over in January to the new boards. So the new boards are gonna be handling all these decisions moving forward. Uh, so I want to personally thank uh, the members of the transition team, the steering team, and especially the integration teams for all their hard work and all the decisions that have been made so far and the upcoming decisions in, you know, this week. Um, but the, the work has been uh, incredible, uh, certainly impressive, uh, but we're looking forward to the new uh, boards of directors, the C3 and the C6, um, you know, taking the leadership moving forward. So just to uh, re-recognize the transition team, these are the members uh, in green, the members that came from the NACE side, the members in red that came from the SSPC side, and those that have stars next to their name are part of the steering team. Uh, here is your list of the C3 board of directors, as well as officers. It also gives uh, their rotation schedule um, you know, on the board. So uh, there will be members uh, exiting the board in 2021. Um, some, some of those spots will be replaced. So we will be looking for the nominating committee to uh, refill um, some of those positions. And here's your C6 board, same thing, uh, you know, rather regular rotation schedule so that we keep uh, new members uh, moving into the organization. Some of the upcoming things to look forward to, um, you know, certainly the new org launch. Uh, which on the next slide, we're going to have a, uh, a QR code uh, with link to the information for that. Uh, we have some uh, town halls coming up. Um, we haven't set the dates and times just yet, um, but there will be uh, specific topics coming up that we're going to be covering. And we're going to look to have general updates uh, coming approximately quarterly in 2021. There will be in information coming out on social media on a regular basis. Uh, we will still continue with the weekly emails um, on Mondays. And as always, you can find information online at either of the existing websites uh, you know, that we have in place on both NACE and SSPC's websites. But we look forward to uh, you know, merging the websites into uh, a, a website for new work, which we will you know, early in the year have a splash page, which we will uh, announce at that uh, January 6th meeting. 
So with that, here's some information on the QR codes with links to each of the uh, uh, you know, website pages and also the New York virtual launch that's gonna take place on January 6th at 10 a.m. Central Time. And with that, thank you for uh, all the presenters for the town hall slides. And I will turn it over at this time to Tim to handle uh, questions. Thanks, Sam. I just want to add my uh, thanks to the integration teams. You know, there's been roughly 100 people involved over the past seven months, um, consuming a, a fair number of hours. I'm not sure what the full time equivalent um, work workload has been, but it has been substantial and, and uh, just want to share my appreciation. Uh, the transition team has got some uh, meaty meetings coming this week to review and, and make decisions on the recommendations from all of those teams. So um, that will be um, something to look forward to and hopefully uh, help us conclude the calendar year and set us up for starting the new organization in the new year. Um, we've got a reasonable list of questions. It seems like several of those are uh, lumped into two categories, uh, one regarding JPCL and uh, the second category broadly, I haven't looked through them all yet, but uh, related to membership. So I'll just put uh, perhaps uh, Bob on deck here with uh, perhaps Bob and Melissa on deck with respect to JPCL and the decision to continue, uh, whether it'll still be available and, and uh, the related questions. Bob? Hi, Tim, and we did answer, actually Bernardo did a great job of answering a lot of those questions in writing. Um, so, but just to do a quick overview, uh, JPC, our understanding is that JPCO uh, archives will still be available through the JPCO website. Um, obviously that's not a decision for our new organization, but our, the publisher has indicated those will still be available. So we think that that will, um, those will still be there. There was a question around materials performance and will it cover um, coatings topics? And it will still cover coatings topics, but we do recognize that the audience for both JPCL and Coatings Pro will be different. And each of the publications will address the topics from the view of their audience. And, uh, but there will still continue to be coatings related uh, topics on um, materials performance. And if Bernardo, if you want to add anything, feel free to do that. Sure. Uh, thank you, Bob. Yes, uh, my presentation was kind of um, just the basics, but I'll provide a little bit more detail here. Um, so the materials performance, how we're going to increase the, um, the types of content in there. Um, we're going to have more um, failure analysis content. We're also going to incorporate more of the job roles in the articles. And this will highlight the, the people behind the scenes. And also highlight different career paths and different options that way. Um, for the, um, we're also going to include more information um, that materials performance typically kind of focused on, but it's going to be focused on the asset owner, the engineer and supplier. Um, so how that might grow a little bit is um, for those particular examples in um, the different industry sectors. For example, um, in the past, JPCL had a more uh, project uh, specific focus sometimes on, for example, bridges. We will include that type of content in materials performance more from the technical side of, of the, the um, issue. In contrast, Codings Pro is going to continue to uh, focus on that contractor side, but we're going to expand um, the content there for a couple different audiences. Um, there's, go there's going to be more information for DOTs, um, and there's also going to be a lot more focus on um, the supplier end as well. Um, we're going to increase the, the number of industry sectors that are covered in Codings Pro, and so it'll grow. We're not really taking anything away. It's really expanding what we already have, and all, not just with um, the industry type, but also the, um, the professionals as well. Uh, I'll add one more question about um, corrosion journal. 
And um, the only major change to Corrosion Journal is um, it's going to be offered exclusively online beginning in January of 2021. Um, it previously it was offered in print and online. It'll, again, it will be just online only. Um, additionally, the uh, the entire catalog since 1945 will be accessible online through subscription as well. And let me see, I had a couple more questions here. Um, let me get to those really quickly. We talked about the segregation of topics between the two different publications. Um, let me see, actually that might've been it. That was it. Thanks, Bernardo, Bob. Uh, hopefully that answered the questions uh, that were, were, were posed. Um, certainly some of them are answered in, in writing in the answered section. So if you if something didn't get answered, feel free to, to uh, update what, what part is missing. Um, I know Jeff, uh, Jeff Didas had a couple of questions uh, regarding uh, sections and areas that um, I'll take a stab at, certainly, I was gonna say Jane might too, but she stepped away from her desk. So we'll go with uh, what I've got. If someone else needs to chip in, uh, feel free, one of the other panelists. But um, yes, they have awards programs, they have uh, finances, they have scholarships. Uh, there's a lot going on in the, on both sides of the, of, of the aisle, if you will, NACE and SSBC. That is something that is going to have to be uh, worked out potentially on a case by case basis. Um, I don't know that the um, sections and chapters team got into the detail of, of looking at scholarships, awards, uh, and things along those lines. Jane, I don't know if you. We have not done that. We have not gotten that far. And, um, you know, again, that will. Uh, need to be considered uh, by tax regulations, things of that nature, and the actual uh, composition of um, especially um, non-U.S. and non-Canadian uh, communities. So that, that will be, unfortunately, a little bit down the road. It's probably safe to say nothing changes until it changes, I think, at this point, right? So, so whatever's in process, um, uh, probably will remain consistent um, until we end up being able to tackle those um, types of questions in the. I, I believe it's fair to say that we would hope that all the um, chapter sections can continue uh, the work that they're doing now. Um, we don't want to see with new org um, our momentum lost at the local level. So, um, you know, Folks should carry on doing what they're doing with their training, um, meetings, courses, virtual content, things of that nature, scholarships, um, you know, and just uh, see that through. Thanks, Jane. Just to, to build on that, uh, Neural asked a question uh, related to mapping how sections and areas will shift to communities. I think the intent at the moment is uh, sections and chapters will be looking to combine, but if there is a Houston section, it'll become a Houston community in the in the new model. Uh, so there's a kind of a one-to-one -one mapping, if if that's a fair statement. Correct, and there are um, a few SSBC chapters which are um, I'll say larger in breadth, and then we'll have to look at um, you know how those combine and what's uh, best for the members there. Um, we're really looking to focus on what is best for membership, where can they get service um, locally in the best possible way. Thanks, and then with respect to areas, at the moment, the area leaderships will just move to the membership program committee, sit as subcommittees beneath there. Um, and as Sam tried to point out on the slide that we talked or that was talking to this, um, there'll be a group that will be tasked with trying to look at and propose uh, if there needs to be a structure between the communities and NACE and what that structure might look like. So it's certainly on the high on the list for the membership committee uh, in the new year as well. 
So hopefully, Neural, that, uh, that answered your question. Um, uh, let's see. Um, Barry, we've got a couple of questions. Uh, I'll try and look through these. I think the membership in both piece is uh, going to be straightforward. You've renewed with SSPC for three years. Uh, that will carry forward into the new organization um, for whatever is the balance of, of that membership. So if you renewed in January of 2020, you ostensibly have two years left. If you renewed in December of 2020, you would have the better part of three years left. And that would carry forward um, into the new organization with, with no uh, penalization. Sorry, Bob, I did see that you were gonna take that live. Anything else to add? I apologize. I do, I do have one thing to add, and it's the second part of that question about ignoring NACE membership renewals. Um, yes, you do not need to renew, but don't ignore emails that are coming from the organization relative to membership. There's gonna be a lot of information coming about how we set up the memberships, how you get enrolled, et cetera. So I just don't want the, um, Barry to think, okay, I can delete any email related to membership because it is gonna be important that our members are um, understanding you know, the, the membership in the new organization over the next um, six months or so. Thanks, and that, that um, there is a certification renewal, which is different as well. Right. So that's outside of the membership uh, space. Uh, uh, Barry, to your first, your first question, which was receiving section support has been challenging. Um, um, I, I, I don't, I, I think it depends, I'm not sure where you're located, Barry, but certainly the pandemic has had a massive impact on uh, the ability to connect, the ability to come together uh, and some of the um, normal operations that we might've seen um, in a typical year, I guess. Now we've got a new typical. I'm not sure what that's going to look like fully going forward. Um, but if you could perhaps uh, be specific about the section support that you think um, is, is missing, maybe we could uh, answer that a bit better. Um, uh, uh, anonymous uh, internationally members reach to chapters and sections for member renewal Q&A basically um, everything that NACE says, how are we planning to address this in 2021? Again, I think initially nothing is intended to change as we bring these, the organizations together, move past the, the legal aspects of doing it and start working at the, at the uh, coal face or the sand face or at the front line um, of, of having to do this. Um, there are NACE offices uh, regionally uh, around the globe, and they certainly are available and encouraged and hopefully providing local support to um, the different regions that, uh, that exist. I don't know, Jane, if there was anything else that you thought that needed to be clarified there? I don't think so. Okay. Uh, Tony, any progress on, uh, says combing, I assume combining membership fees. Uh, we have proposed, uh, there has been a proposal for what the new tier structure would look like for individual and corporate members. Uh, those are recommendations that the transition team will um, be looking to, to take up and decide upon uh, this week, in fact. And uh, I think has been addressed a couple of times there is uh, fundamentally if you're a member of one you're now you have the ability to be a member of both in the in the new year so hopefully that addresses the the question Tony. I guess Bob you offered to answer a question live regarding uh, JPCL and Espanol. Yeah in fact I was just starting to, to I was going to type an answer but um, so, so first of all, our understanding is that JPCL did stop publishing their Spanish version a while back. It, it is quite expensive to do full translations. Um, we do do select translation and, and we'll continue to do that. But we also believe one of the advantages of the merger is for us to better focus our resources. 
and make better use of them. So I would see that translation becomes a uh, more and more important part of our publishing operations going forward. Thanks. Um, Jim Schmiller asking about uh, life member. Uh, will it continue? Yes, there will continue to be recognition for um, life members. That's uh, detailed. Uh, we did a membership proposal, uh, I believe, last month. So that town hall is available if you want to see what the proposal looks like. The recording of that is available uh, there. And uh, Michael, having been a member of both, curious how the consolidation will be done. Certainly very different or, or can be different groups of, of professionals, um, certainly different focuses uh, at times. Um, but we have to bring the organizations together. That doesn't mean that all the meetings will be of interest to everyone. There's certainly the introduction here of communities of interest that will be also allow people to participate where they want to focus their technical interests and, and uh, network in addition to the geography that they might be a part of. The actual right. mechanics of how to bring it together. I'm sorry, Jane, go ahead. No, no I was just going to add that, um, you know, we feel that there's a model that, you know, people would have both their geographic community and probably multiple um, uh, communities of interest. Um, and that, you know, then they're not stuck in just, you know, getting their uh, local information or their technical information from one source, that they would have multiple avenues there. So hopefully, Michael, that uh, answered that for you. I guess, Bob, you wanted to, to chat. We've got one question that's left here to, uh, left in the queue anyway. Yeah, and that, that's a big question. So. The question's about uh, will SSBC and NACE membership and certification databases uh, information be with members be merged into one database. Um, so the full intent is that we will move to one database, just like any organization would. You want that all in one place. Um, we have a team that's working now to do the analysis of that and to look at the options relative to software and hardware and all the things that go into making that decision. That is a a really big decision for the organization. And it's one that uh, has a complexity to it that needs to make sure that we need to make sure we address. So there is a team of members and, and staff working through that. In the short term, we're gonna continue to operate and maintain both databases. The second part of this question has to do with um, information integrity and address privacy issues and notifications, et cetera. Uh, we do have a um, policies, procedures, guidelines that we follow to protect the privacy of our members in both organization. And that is, has um, been now shared and we are doing it equally with both organizations and will continue. The, the one piece that where we're gonna need the help from the members and we're finding to be a bit of a struggle is getting the data up to date from our members um, we only know if your email changed, if you tell us, or your mailing address changed, or your job changed. And that has been an ongoing struggle for both NACE and SSBC. I expect as we move into a new database, we are going to do everything we can to scrub that data, update that data, and get it as accurate as possible. I put my plug in now. We need the members help in providing us that information uh, when the time comes. So. And you can always update your information in the current system. So if your job has changed and you haven't told us or your email, let us know because we need that so that we can communicate with you as the merger progresses. Yeah, and I think the, the one acronym you didn't mention there, Bob, which was uh, GDPR, right? Both, both organizations are compliant with the GDPR requirements. In fact, we found through this process, it can be a challenge to make sure we're uh, getting the message out to our members that maybe have opted out of receiving emails on the organization when, when really something like the vote is something every member should have, uh, have a say in. So, uh, certainly something we've taken to heart as we go. I, I do see a couple of uh, questions that are in the uh, 
chat as opposed to the QA, uh, Gil, Gil Romer, um, any information on changes in the handling of newsletters coming from the NACE side. Um, at the moment, uh, Gil, it's my understanding that the area newsletters will continue um, as long as that area model exists. Uh, there's certainly regional content there that is relevant to the members in those regions. Um, and that will be part of the transition plan as we look at the membership model going into the new year. So, you know, all of these program committees have interconnections to other program committees. Um, and just to build on that, uh, Neural asked about an area conference. Uh, again, so the membership committee has a connection with the events, uh, conferences and events committee. We want to make sure that we're having the right regional content uh, or regional events rather shared um, across. Whether that will sit with the membership committee or with the events and conferences committee or conferences and events committee, sorry, uh, is, a, is a question that uh, hasn't been answered yet, but I would, my guess is it will sit with the conferences and events piece, but we certainly have membership will have a, a stake, be a stakeholder in where those are held and, and perhaps even topics for what is being held. 